a couple of friends are stopping by and we're going to talk about Invoke DSC resource and I'm going to take you along. So let's go hang out and chat for a while. Welcome to the show. things is there's so many things that I want to talk to you about but you know here's what's concerning me a lot is invoke DSC research now this is a DSC thing but yeah yeah invoke DSC resource has been kind of the words have been out for a while and yeah, you see the RFC about, it's published I did see the RFC yeah. but you know <clears throat> now with everybody else here yeah. this is a great time for you to kind of tell what that invoke uh, DSC resource is let's talk about why we're doing that yeah, that's a really that's interesting great. story. By the way, the RFC is published, uh, PowerShell-RFC as the repo in GitHub. Uh, yeah. And go look at the pull requests, find the one about Invoke DSC resource. It's really important to go comment on that if you care about this area. And if you go look, sometimes it's fun in GitHub to see when somebody makes a comment and then go look at their profile. We've got, if you remember, DSC as a platform originally was to bring Windows into the cloud space, right? So. Um, Windows was not originally designed to be configured as code. All the APIs are different, so this standardizes everything into declarative syntax. If you go look at who's been making comments, it's all of the partners that care because oh. that original investment was to make DSC a platform, and so everybody's using it. Um, so we're thinking about all these different non-Microsoft contributors and then making comments about that, that really uh, have a stake in this. So anyway, the reason we do invoke DSC resource, as you're seeing uh, the DSC syntax and the DSC platform get all of these new investments for Azure, it's important that we also make sure that DSC can stand on its own and that the community can continue with the investments that are being made and that it's just a key component of the PowerShell platform. It's part of the PowerShell skill set. I think this is really interesting because um, with with Invoke DSE resource, that's going to let us start to do a few things that we haven't been able to really do effectively in the past, though, right? Yes. There's a bunch of new scenarios that get lit up. We should find like a PowerShell expert that can. You know what we? This. I you know if only in this building in in this. <laughs> now here's the best part. Yes, we tried to do a setup, but if you don't know, you need to know. This is. Joey Ayelio, a senior program manager for the PowerShell team, super smart. So, we're, are you going to help us out here with this Invoke I DSC? I would love to. Jason. What are some I'd of the scenarios to. that we're looking at with Invoke DSC resource? Yeah, what, so, what are some of the stuff? I mean, Michael was just talking about one of the great ones, I think, which is uh, you know partner integration, right? Uh, Invoke DSC resource um, is really this way to execute uh, DSC resource modules without having to use something like the local configuration manager or the LCM. Um, in order to execute them. And so given uh, that we don't have an LCM uh, today for PowerShell Core, uh, we want to make sure that our partners in the configuration management space are able to execute DSC resources just as they would execute any of their own resources. Yeah, resources. we should explain what that means. So LCM, the engine for DSC, is when you give it a configuration, that's the engine that literally takes that MOF and says, all right, that's the document for this machine. So it should have these features and these registry keys and these services. Invoke DSC resource is a PowerShell commandlet that lets you call to uh, a DSC resource just the same way you would to a module. So you want to say registry, right? And I'm declaring registry, this value should be zero or one or whatever, right. foo. Uh, invoke DSC resource would say, call the registry DSC resource, which is the thing responsible for making sure the registry is correct, and tell it, I want to test if this property has a value of one. So it's a way of taking that DSC resource syntax and bringing it into just another set of commandlets in PowerShell as something that you can just run against. And it's really 
it, a nice way for partners to use those community resources and their tooling. And I think this is it. And what you were saying is along that lines, the, the old way that we used to do this was the only way to get a resource to run was to write the config up, fire it through the LCM, and that's how you did your testing, right? And now we can not only run the resources to do the testing that we want to do, we can actually just use those resources, right? Yeah, yeah and, and, and you know, we had this functionality in Windows PowerShell as well uh, for Invoke DSC resource. Um, so right. a lot of this is only about, you know, bringing that coverage because in, in many ways, like Michael was just saying, a, a, a DSC resource is just a module uh, that, that caters to some very specific constraints, right? It needs to, uh, to expose this get target resource, set target resource, test target resource. And so um, given that we just have these, these three perfectly good functions sitting there wrapped in a module for, for every, uh, every DSC resource, why not expose them to PowerShell uh, core customers so that they can use you know, these, these item potent functions uh, in, in an in a easy way? So the power of this in one scenario is I can take all, those all of those resources written by Microsoft in the community and I can use them now just like I would with a commandlet, but I can use them pretty much cross-plat. Cross -plat. Which not is a lot important. of Linux and uh, not a lot of DSC resources for Linux and Mac and Windows PowerShell. Right, not, not, not a whole need for them either, right? Almost We're, zero. Yeah, almost so zero. We have a whole new area to go explore now. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of the exciting part. But this this particular scenario gets me able to use those resources that maybe if I wasn't doing a lot of configuration management, I didn't have access to use those resources. Now. Yep. I can. Yes. Well, that's a great scenario. What else, though? So, you know what's really cool? People have asked me for years if there's ways to use DSC in user context. And, uh, what do you mean by that? So, an example would be like, right now, DSC runs as local system. So, it's running as yeah. a system account. It's got full privilege. What if there was some way, I just want to configure an application. I don't need it to be a godlike access. I just want it to run as a user and take care of some tasks for me. And I want to put it in a declarative syntax. And then this spawns out into like, what if I want to run a, what if I want to use this for declarative configuration in my Docker files? Or what if I want to put this in something like a build task or a web job in a web app? And like after the app gets deployed, it's just going to do things in user space to, to get the app and guarantee that the app looks the way that it should. Uh, but it, there is no system context in these things. It won't let right. me to do things at the system level. Um, and the reason we have to do this is, What's the, there's no equivalent to running as local system after you leave Windows. After you leave right. cross plat, you have to go to the user space. And for testing, for like if you want to use invoke DSC resource for testing, you can still use like PS exec S and run as local system. That's kind of table stakes, you know, if you're building that type of thing. But this opens up like a whole bunch of new scenarios where you could run, you could use DSC resources to perform work in user context. That's something we haven't even really thought through. And so, and so just to clarify, I think, uh, in, in, the sort of summary of what Michael's saying here is that uh, invoke DSC resource will execute in the same user context as the PowerShell run space that it is being executed in. Now that's that been a request thing. for quite some time though, to handle some of these issues that are like that. But I, I think a lot of times the request is more for the higher elevation of going up to more administrative control, but this lets you refine it down to only the privileges needed and sometimes the only the privileges that you may get access to to modify that application. Right. And, and actually, interestingly, like, like you bring up this point of, hey, this is a, a way to actually make sure you're executing with less privileges than you need. Uh, but interestingly, lots and lots of deployments and installations on Windows, particularly in the client space, uh, require a user context of some sort. Um, and local system uh, doesn't have that user context. So for instance, local system does not have a profile folder. Right, so uh, and I, I'm not speaking about a PowerShell profile, but a Windows profile. Yeah. So, um, so if if say a Visual Studio installer oh. was wrapped in a DSC resource, um, it may require that I have a home directory, right? And running under local system, I'm, I'm yeah. actually not able to do that at all. And I, I believe this was uh, we introduced PS DSC run as credential, yeah. right, as a as a universal property in order to support this scenario. Um, but that also means that I now have to carry the credentials right. uh, associated with authenticating as that user uh, along with the MOF file or, or serialized in yeah. some way into the you, MOF you file. Were, like, telling um, local system to go authenticate as a user. Essentially yeah. impersonate uh, itself as a user. And actually, there are some weird caveats around impersonating uh, yeah. yourself as a user where even some of those requirements that, you know, something like the Visual Studio installer, and I don't want to, nobody catch me on that example. I'm not sure that's a great example. Um, but in a scenario like that, 
uh, sometimes impersonation is not quite enough uh, either. So this is actually a case where you are literally invoking the functionality in the PowerShell run space as the user uh, that that run space is, is sitting in. So I'm curious what the community will do with this. Like uh, this is one of those times where you just trust. You just say, all right, we're going to get out of the way completely, hand this out, put it in PowerShell core, let the community run with it, and then see what happens. Like we know partners are going to get behind it because they've already told us that. Well, that's good. Uh, someone could come along uh, and implement a whole new way to run DSC that we haven't thought about before and create a community project behind it. Someone could take this and plug it into tools we haven't thought about before. So this is one of those times when you just kind of have to trust and, and enable the technology and then kind of see what creative minds come up with. But, so with enabling that creative technology, when and where can people start to expect to be able to work with this yep. cross platform so I think it's coming in preview four. I don't want to offer any guarantees. This, uh, so this may let's do this might let's do this kind of friendly kind of thing. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, okay. maybe um, preview four, preview five. Let's put it this way: the, the intent though is to ship in seven. Though is that still the intent? That that is the current intent. Yes. Okay. So. And you know, you guys know, you know, a lot of things can change from now until whenever you're seeing this video. But right now, that's what the current plan is. And as it starts to roll out, it's going to be in core, right? Yeah. We're talking in core. We're not talking as a separate, yeah. like, module, which there's nothing wrong with that. But this is going to be in the product. So yeah. Now, I, I do want to offer a caveat here. Oh, okay. Uh, which is as we... As we go into this exercise of, of now having these DSC resources, obviously invoke DSC resources can work cross-platform. Um, but you have to be aware of whether or not not only your resources work cross-platform, but that the underlying modules that they depend on yep. uh, have, have been marked as cross-platform and or core compatible. And like so, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's so, explore that for a second because what you're saying is it was actually a, leading me into my next uh, series of questions. I want to use this now. And if I want to use this cross plat, one of the first things is, is the resource itself may not actually, it may be calling windows, right? And right. that's not going to work on Linux, right. but the resource, and you bring this up, the resource may be calling modules that are not available on Linux either. And it has those dependencies. So and, there's a couple and, of areas. And yeah. it's almost certainly. So yeah, like yeah. X Active Directory is a great example, right? X Active Directory um, is obviously making extremely, uh, uh, large amount of usage of the Active Directory module. Right. right? Uh, it's it's not going to re-implement all of the logic there to, to, to interact with Active Directory. Um, and so, you know, in, in this case, you're actually going to need uh, a Windows machine, right? The Active Directory is not work cross-platform today. Um, but you'll also need the latest version uh, or a semi-recent version of the remote server administration tools, RSET. Yeah. Um, because only in the 1809 timeframe, which is obviously uh, uh, also known as server 2019 or uh, we might have called it something else, an RS, something yeah. like that. But in the 1809 timeframe, that was when we updated the, the Active Directory modules to support core. And so you're going to need uh, to be running this invoke DSC resource on a machine that has that latest version of, of our set. And that's something you want to keep in mind. Just because it works cross-plat doesn't mean necessarily that what you want to do is cross-platform. you got to make sure that what you want to do is on the platform that you're doing it on. Yes. So what else do we need to know about Invoke DSC resource? Because I, I think this is going to be an impact. What can we do as a community to kind of help out? Come on the, on the RFC, first of all. Which we talked about Even in episode after, three. And, and <clears throat> actually, it's a good question for you. After the RFC is merged, after the feature gets checked into the previews, uh, what is the preferred way to get feedback on it? Just go create an issue for the PowerShell repo? Yep. So today you're just going to go right into, into the PowerShell PowerShell repo, file an issue. Um, you know, the, the best way that you can position that issue, we've done a much better job as of late with our issue templates uh, to make sure that people are providing all the sorts of information that we need for a given bug report. But it also helps a lot to give us the context around you know, what kind of scenario or, or what you were trying to accomplish um, when you ran into that bug. Because very oftentimes we can look at a bug, uh, think that it's it's a very esoteric use case or an edge case. Um, and, and then when someone uh, you know, side channels us to tell us why they were hitting that bug, uh, it turns out that they were trying to do something that was perfectly reasonable and, and is likely very common for a lot of other users. So explain to us you know, what you were trying to do um, you know, what other technologies you were using along with that thing is, is going to help significantly. But, but also, um, I think it's important, um, you know, we're, we're on Twitter, 
Um, I recently reinstalled uh, a Discord so that I could participate in the virtual user group. Um, but also, you, you can file issues on on the PowerShell PowerShell repo um, that might not have a specific aim, so that may be more oriented around a discussion that you want to have. You know, we don't want people just asking uh, one-off questions in that repository, but but if there's a topic that you feel needs to be addressed uh, around the Invoke DSC resource, you know, filing an issue discussion would be very helpful. And one thing that I want to point out, remember, it helps us a lot, whether you're reviewing an RFC or if you're posting an issue, give us the scenarios that you're working in so that we can understand what you're working in because you might very well have something yes. that's valid, but we don't understand it if you don't give us the scenarios. Cool. Well, you know what? I really appreciate you guys taking the time in this book, DSC resource. Thank you. You, sir, we have a lot more to talk about in this we'll series. Be back. And you too, I would guess the demos. there's so much demos. Let's we've got to do demos. Do All right. So we've got a lot more with both these guys coming up in the future, sooner probably with Michael. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate it a lot. Thanks. Michael, thank you. Thank you.